From its premiere on December 27, 1947, to its final episode in September 1960, Howdy Doody reigned supreme as a cherished part of the American entertainment landscape. While younger viewers might not be all that familiar with the program, just ask anyone alive during the mid-20th century and they'll tell you Howdy Doody was a central part of their childhood. As we dive into the story of Howdy Doody, we'll uncover the untold aspects of its history, from the challenges faced by Bob Smith, including his heart attack and subsequent break from the show, to the legacy he left behind, will shed light on the remarkable journey that unfolded behind the scenes. On December 27, 1947, at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, television witnessed its first major success as Howdy Doody made its debut. With the medium still in its infancy, a simple test pattern preceded the arrival of this groundbreaking show. Curiously, on that very day, a massive snowstorm blanketed the region, but it didn't deter the eager viewership. Approximately 15,000 homes within NBC's 10-station Eastern Seaboard Network tuned in to what would later be known as the Howdy Doody Show. With its delightful circus and cowboy aesthetic, the show introduced Buffalo Bob Smith as the host, along with a mischievous clown named Clarabelle, initially portrayed by Bob Keeshan, who later found fame as Captain Kangaroo. Following its premiere, Variety sang praises for the show, emphasizing its remarkable ability to captivate even the most restless of children. The magic of Howdy Doody quickly transformed it into television's first ever weekday series. However, in the rush to bring the series to air, the main puppet star was absent from the initial broadcasts. Even commercials were absent for the first three months. Bob Smith assumed the role of both host and voice actor for Howdy Doody, a character whose friendly Howdy Do greeting had already already brought laughter to kids' radios across the country. When Smith transitioned to television, he faced competition from other puppeteers and marionette performers, including Chicago's Kukla, Fran and Ollie, and Paul Winchell's Jerry Mahoney, as they vied to become TV's first stars. Interestingly, there was no pre-existing Howdy Doody puppet for radio. Puppeteer Frank Paris worked diligently to create one for television, but it wasn't ready in time for the initial shows. To compensate, Smith had to explain to the children that Howdy was simply too shy to come out of a drawer. When Ugly Howdy, as the makeshift puppet was affectionately called, finally made its debut, it was initially met with less than favorable reactions. To put it bluntly, the puppet's appearance resembled something straight out of a John Carpenter movie. Fortunately, a pair of Disney artists intervened, remodeling and improving the marionette, which was later expertly crafted by renowned puppet maker Velma Dawson. To mask Howdy's temporary absence, a brilliantly successful promotional campaign was launched. In 1948, the same year Truman secured the American presidency, Howdy ran for the honorary title of President of All the Kids in America. Young viewers were informed that Howdy was away on a campaign trail. When he finally returned, his new face, enhanced with 48 freckles representing each state at the time, was explained as plastic surgery to boost his election prospects. Howdy Doody's Phenomenal Cast the series boasted an array of supporting characters, most of them puppets. Mayor Phineas T. Bluster ruled over Dutyville, accompanied by a family of Bluster brothers, Howdy's whiny pal, Dilly Dally, and the peculiar-looking Flubadub, a puppet composed of eight different animals, added to the show's charm. Among the human characters was Princess Summerfall Winterspring, portrayed by Judy Tyler, who seized the hearts of many young TV viewers before leaving the show to co-star with Elvis Presley in Jailhouse Rock. Tragically, Tyler's life was cut short in a car accident even before the film's release. As Western stars like Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, and Hopalong Cassidy stormed onto the television scene, Howdy Doody incorporated more cowboy themes into the show. This unfortunately included a not-so-bright Indian character named Chief Thunderthud, portrayed by Bill LeCornek, whose frequent utterance of cowabunga failed to improve the character's political correctness. The Peanut Gallery one of the iconic elements that made Howdy Doody a unique and interactive experience for young viewers was the peanut gallery. This term referred to a group of 40 children seated in the studio, forming an enthusiastic and lively audience. These lucky kids had the opportunity to witness the magic of Howdy Doody up close and personal, immersing themselves in the whimsical world of the show. The peanut gallery was an integral part of the Howdy Doody experience, serving multiple purposes. First and foremost, these young audience members 
provided genuine reactions and infectious laughter, adding an authentic sense of joy and excitement to each episode. Their enthusiasm resonated through the television screen, inviting viewers at home to join in the fun. Beyond their vocal contributions, the Peanut Gallery also had the occasional chance to interact with the show's hosts and characters. Bob Smith often engaged with the children, creating an inclusive and participatory atmosphere. Whether it was answering questions, sharing stories, or even singing along with Howdy Doody's catchy tunes, the Peanut Gallery had a unique opportunity to actively engage with the show they loved. The presence of the peanut gallery also had a practical purpose. As live participants, these children provided a live feedback loop for the show's producers and performers to work with. The genuine reactions from the peanut gallery helped gauge the success of comedic moments, the effectiveness of puppet performances, and the overall engagement of the audience. The End of an Era Howdy Doody faced a decline in popularity in 1955 when the Mickey Mouse Club premiered. The show's transition to Disney's realm marked a natural progression from puppet shows to a more sophisticated entertainment format. Nevertheless, Howdy Doody retained a distinctive advantage. It was broadcast live, which meant anything could happen. In November 1954, a Canadian adaptation of Howdy Doody was produced by CBC in Toronto, running for five seasons. Unlike its American counterpart, the Canadian version was set in the Canadian North, featuring forest ranger Timber Tom, played by Peter Muse, as the host. Interestingly, Howdy Doody Canada indirectly influenced the creation of Doctor Who. The show's executive producer, Sidney Newman, ventured to England after his Canadian stint, eventually becoming the head of BBC drama and conceiving the iconic time-traveling Doctor series. By September 1960, NBC execs determined that rerunning cartoons would be more cost-effective than producing new episodes of Howdy Doody. The final episode, an hour-long affair, concluded with a close-up of Clarabelle, played by Lou Anderson, during the show's last five years. In a touching and unforgettable moment, Anderson broke character and spoke his only words throughout the 13-year run of the series. Goodbye, kids. Bob Smith's Heart Attack while Howdy Doody and its beloved host, Bob Smith, brought joy and laughter to millions, fate had a different plan. In 1954, Bob experienced a life-altering moment when he suffered a near-fatal heart attack. This sudden health scare forced him to take a break from the show he had dedicated himself to for more than a half decade at that point. Following his heart attack, Bob underwent a period of recovery and recuperation, focusing on his health and well-being. The absence of his familiar presence left a noticeable void on the Howdy Doody set, and fans anxiously awaited his return. But his health condition proved to be a significant challenge, and he ultimately faced difficulties in resuming his role as the beloved host. Tragically, despite his best efforts, Bob's health continued to deteriorate. In the midst of battling the effects of his heart attack, he faced additional medical complications that further impacted his ability to reprise his role with Howdy Doody. On July 30, 1998, Bob Smith passed away an unexpected battle. Following Bob's untimely passing, a new and entirely unexpected chapter unfolded in the history of Howdy Doody, a battle for the marionettes that had long been an integral part of the show. With Bob no longer able to oversee the fate of Howdy Doody's beloved characters, disputes arose among various parties. The marionettes subsequently became the subject of legal battles and negotiations as different people and organizations staked their claims. One notable contender was the Detroit Institute of Arts, which sought to acquire the marionettes and display them as part of their collection. Meanwhile, other interested parties emerged, each vying for the opportunity to possess and showcase the marionettes. Ultimately, they found a new home at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have fond memories of watching Howdy Doody with friends and family? Let us know in the comments section below.